I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and this is Mail Call Mondays, the show that answers your questions about precision rifles, optics, and equipment. Welcome to another Mail Call Mondays, and today we are going to talk about the counterfeit Atlas bipods. Uh, now, this question was kind of kicked off by a comment on one of our previous videos where a guy was talking about the Atlas bipod that I had on one of the rifles in the videos. And he was commenting about how they're too expensive and you can go online and for $65 uh, you can pick up a counterfeit version. Now you notice I'm using the word counterfeit, not clone, uh, not replica, it's a counterfeit. Uh, that's very precise language because that is exactly what they are doing. Uh, they are making a product that is supposed to look like the legitimate product, that's supposed to trick you into believing it's a legitimate product, uh, in order to make money and damage the company that makes the legitimate product. A lot of people go out and buy these guys, and I'm basically here to tell you why you should not buy this. Now, on the table in front of me, this is the counterfeit Atlas version 8 bipod. Uh, this is a legitimate Atlas version 8 bipod with an Accuracy International spigot that's also made by B&T Industries. And this is a Atlas PSR bipod. This is the latest and greatest. Uh, this is the one that's SOCOM adapted for the Precision Sniper Rifle contract. So we're going to talk about some of the differences here and uh, why this is a piece of garbage. I know it's kind of burying the lead, but I really don't want there to be any misunderstanding about this. Now, when I initially saw this comment, I went and started doing a little research. And the, the incentive to purchase a counterfeit is uh, pretty apparent. Uh, these run for about $65 on Amazon. This is the best copy that I could find. I'm sure there are some cheaper, uh, a lot worse copies out there. But I wanted to be fair in the comparison, so I bought one of the higher-end counterfeits. Um, this, with a clamp mount, not the Accuracy International mount on it, but with an ADM clamp mount on it, uh, runs about $219. The PSR with an ADM clamp runs about $319. So $65, $219, and $319. You can very quickly see uh, why people are considering buying these. Uh, let's go over some of the differences though and show you why this is not a really good comparison because one of the arguments that I've heard for this is, well, I don't want to risk my money on buying an Atlas if I may not like it so I'll go ahead and spend a little bit of money on a counterfeit, and if it works the way I want it to work, or if I like the way it works, then I'll go out and buy a real Atlas. Uh, well, that doesn't work real well. Uh, if you were shopping for a Ferrari, uh, you wouldn't go out and test drive a Ferrari kit car built on a Fiero, and then decide, oh, that didn't work the way I want it to, so I'm not gonna buy a Ferrari. Uh, it really doesn't work that way. If you think you want to buy an Atlas, then you need to try out a real Atlas, uh, not something that just kind of looks like an Atlas. So when I purchased this, it came in a regular um, gray, or I'm sorry, a regular brown cardboard box, no literature, no directions. There are no manufacturer marks anywhere on here, uh, which will be uh, your first indication that you're dealing with a counterfeit, not a legitimate one. The uh, B&T Industries is very proud of their product, and on them, they're printed Atlas, Atlas uh, Bipod patented on the version 8. On the PSR, it's a little bit different because the way the base is made, it's uh, actually smaller with the arrow above it, but same thing, Atlas Bipod patented. And even on our ADM mount up here, uh, it's got ADM, the American flag on it, their logo, all that stuff. So uh, your first indicator is if you see what you think is an Atlas at a gun show laying on a table and you pick it up and the price looks like Atlas money, but it doesn't have any markings on it, it is not an Atlas, it's a counterfeit. Uh, so when I opened the box and looked at it, I was actually really surprised because 
uh, without having another atlas right next to it, it was difficult to see the differences. Now, I could immediately see little things like it's a little shinier on the silver parts, and that's because this is chrome-plated, whereas an atlas uh, uses stainless steel. And then other things like the knurling. Uh, the knurling is smooth on the counterfeit, uh, whereas on the legitimate Atlas, it's very rough knurling. Uh, in fact, I can take the, the knurled legs on the counterfeit and rub them across my hand, and it's not hurting me. You know, there's just a little bit of friction there, but it's not tearing me up. Uh, if I tried to do that with the regular Atlas, I'm going to be bleeding very quickly. It's going to rip skin off. Uh, and the reason behind that is uh, these are designed to be used in adverse conditions. So when it's cold, snowy, it's been sleeting, uh, you're covered in mud, uh, maybe your hands are bloody, uh, then you want to be able to get a really good purchase on the bipod. You want to be able to do what you need to do, which in the case of deploying the legs, is you grab the legs, you pull the collar down, and deploy the legs. Uh, sometimes you may have the weight of the rifle on it and you need to grab a hold of that collar and deploy the legs to where they need to go. Uh, when you've got the legs deployed and you want to close them up, you have to grab the body of the leg, pull down the collar, and snap it shut. So the knurling is really key to smooth function of this bipod. You really need to be able to grab it and not have your hands slide around. Uh, the knurling on the counterfeit really is just for cosmetic purposes. It's just so when you look at it, it looks like a real atlas. Uh, they stop short of knurling it deep enough to really give it some teeth. And part of that is machine time. It takes longer to do that. Uh, the other part of it is if you use thin materials and knurl them severely, then you create failure points. Uh, and this is definitely uh, a lighter duty uh, version of the atlas. So the knurling is a dead giveaway. And when you start getting into little things, uh, you notice the differences. The locking plates for the legs, I mentioned that they're chrome plated. So once the chrome starts chipping off, uh, you can expect this is going to start to rust. Uh, since the Atlas uses stainless steel, uh, you don't really have to worry about the corrosion issues. And obviously that was by design. Um, you can actually see that the uh, leg locking plates are stamped steel and they didn't do a good job of finishing them because you can still see the flashing in each of the inlets and that uh, changes the feel to the way the legs lock down. They don't lock down anywhere near as smoothly as an atlas. Uh, the legs actually also don't swing as freely as they do on the atlas. There's a lot more tension to this because the plates are not precision machined parts. When you come down to the uh, locking pins, the locking pins are nowhere near as thick when you actually push it down and look in the recess. Uh, if you're just looking at the size of the button, the size of the button is very similar. Uh, the size of the lock is very similar and they had to do that for appearance purposes uh, because if it was too much smaller, it wouldn't look like an Atlas bipod. Again, they are trying to confuse you. They're trying to trick you into thinking this is an atlas. Uh, but when you look in the parts that you wouldn't normally see with a camera lens or you wouldn't normally see walking by, uh, you notice that they're thinner. They're not built as well. So the leg locks are stiffer. Uh, they don't lock as securely. They don't lock as smoothly. Uh, the bolts are again designed to look the same. They have what appears to be a bronze washer in there, but I would bet the material is probably a little suspect. Um, so the, the actual way that the legs feel is different. Now deploying the legs, they actually did a good job on the counterfeit there. Uh, the legs deploy with a little bit more force. Uh, I think it takes a little less force to pull the locking collar down, but a little bit more force to deploy it. Uh, you can tell if I unlock the collar and hold this upside down, the leg doesn't extend. Uh, if I hold this bipod upside down, unlock the collar, it extends. Um, also, the actual locking mechanism uses ball detents and a C-clip to retain uh, the collar there. And those are beefy on the Atlas. The C-clip is smaller on the counterfeit and the ball detents are smaller. 
Uh, so you are not quite getting the same amount of um, locking force keeping that leg extended as you do on the legitimate one. And again, since the collar is easier to pull down, uh, you're also not getting that same amount of spring force keeping the collar locked in. So again, uh, just lighter duty, cheaper parts. Uh, we've already talked about the knurling. Now let's get down to the feet. Uh, one of the really cool designs on the Atlas is that the feet are interchangeable. You can also get leg extensions for them, or uh, you can get stuff like these are rifle sticks, uh, which we're in the process of reviewing, and they are basically a leg extension uh, that you can put on your Atlas bipod, and it has exchangeable feet, or you can go back and use your regular Atlas feet. So there are a variety of different options that you can add on the Atlas bipod, if you will. Now, when we get to the counterfeit, the legs still, or the feet still disengage in the same way. You can use a bullet tip, or I'm gonna use my Glock tool here, and you just push in this little ball detent, and then you can pop the foot out. At first, it looks to be the same, uh, but what we quickly notice is the diameter inside the legs here is smaller and the spigot on the end of the leg is a smaller design uh, than the actual Atlas. And so what that means is none of the accessories for Atlas bipods will work. Uh, when we get down to the actual feet themselves, one of the things that I really like about the Atlas bipods is they use a softer material for the feet. Uh, so when you're on concrete surfaces or car hoods or anything like that, uh, they have a pretty decent grip. They have better grip than the Harris bipods. Um, so shooting across car hoods, which I've done quite a bit, or uh, deck lids, uh, they really grab shooting on a concrete pad. Uh, they grab fairly well. And uh, overall, they're just really enjoyable to use. Uh, once you get them roughed up like these are now, uh, they really grip pretty stinking well. Uh, now, eventually, you will tear these up or wear these out. That's just a fact of softer rubber. And you can get a replacement set from B&T Industries. Now, when we switch over uh, to the counterfeit, they use a much harder material uh, for the feet. And I mean much harder. I can't really deform it with just thumb pressure. If I dig my nail into it, I can uh, make a little bit of a mark in it but it is almost a hard plastic uh, with the feel to it. Now, since it's a harder plastic, it's not gonna grip into surfaces anywhere near as well as the Atlas feet do. Uh, in fact, I would bet this is gonna slide all over a car hood and not give me any kind of resistance at all to load the bipod. Um, when using it on concrete, uh, it's gonna get damaged. It's not gonna be as pliable as the rubber, and so, I think you're gonna scrape these feet up really, really quick. Now getting replacements, I wouldn't hold your breath on getting replacements. And because they're not the same diameter as the Atlas, you're not gonna be able to just use Atlas feet to replace it. You're not gonna be able to use spikes or ski feet or any of the other stuff uh, that's out there. You would have to use something that's specific to counterfeits. Um, and I don't even know who produces those. Uh, so again, another hit against it. Now again, going back to that whole argument that, uh, well, maybe I'll just get a counterfeit to see uh, if I like the way it works and then I'll purchase an Atlas. Uh, well, what I figured out with this guy is it doesn't really work anything like a legitimate Atlas. Now you can see when we take our Atlas version eight bipod here, uh, we've got an adjustment wheel on the bottom and this one's got an adjustment wheel on the bottom, but um, you can go from totally locked down to totally loose, and the head here is not flopping around. I mean, I can, I can get it to move if I push on it, and obviously when I have a rifle attached to it, it's a whole lot easier. Uh, but when I get the rifle to the position I want and come off of it, it's going to hold there. Uh, so that means if we've got an uneven surface and I get the rifle leveled out on an uneven surface and I come off the gun, the gun's gonna stay level. Uh, it's not gonna wanna flop over to the other side. And any of you guys that have had a gun fall over on a concrete pad uh, know what kind of pucker factor that is. 
Uh, and it does happen when you get a bipod extended to one end and you have the bipod too loose, the gun just wants to fall over. I've seen it happen many times. I've had it happen to me a couple of times. Uh, it's not a good thing. Plus on the Atlas, uh, you have that initial tension. You also have tension panning back and forth and you can loosen that up if you want. And then you have a little bit of uh, forward and back preload on it, just a degree or two. Uh, so when you get down behind the rifle, you can really load it and that bipod will flex and take that load and really help you uh, control that recoil. So overall, it is a great design. It's really that along with the 45 angle legs are one of the hallmark features of the Atlas bipods. And that's the same for the PSR as well as the version 8. Now, when we come over here to the counterfeit, uh, you'll notice I can lock this totally down and it's really tight. I don't have any pan. I don't have any tilt. I don't have any forward back, nothing, uh, no cant. Uh, it is really locked down. It is like a solid pair of legs sticking off your rifle. Uh, some guys may like that. You can get close to that with the Atlas if you really torque that knob down uh, to where nothing moves. Uh, but the advantage there is even if you get it to its tightest spot, you can still pretty much overcome that and get the bipod to those little micro adjustments that you need. Um, with this guy, um, if you need an angle adjustment that you can't achieve with the legs because they're increments, it's not infinitely adjustable, uh, then you're going to have to go to some cant in the actual head of the bipod, in the, the gimbal mechanism. Uh, well, for this, you have to loosen it up. And you see, I've loosened it up a couple of turns now, and I've got a couple of degrees here. But really, it's barely enough to overcome one of the notches. But now we have absolutely no tension at all. It just flops around. You can see how easily I'm moving this with my fingers versus how difficult it was to move the Atlas. Uh, if we go to tighten it down and see, I'm just, I'll just use my tip of my finger here. So you can see I'm not really tightening this knob down. No can't. Loose as a goose, no can. There, there's no in-between. There's no point where you can loosen it up and have tension on it, uh, but not having it flop around. Uh, now say you're shooting, you, you've got it set up so you, you've, got your, uh, you've got your can't so you can get the rifle leveled out. And say we're in a field shooting match and you've got an array of targets in front of you and you're shooting a couple of different stages and you have to pan back and forth uh, as you're shooting these targets and you're panning and you're panning and you're shooting all day and you're not paying attention to what's going on. You're talking to your buddies and just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, well, you notice what's happening here with that knob. It's going one direction. It's not going back the other direction. And uh, we've got a problem here. Uh, well, if you keep doing that, you keep doing this panning back and forth, Eventually what happens is the knob falls off and your bipod comes apart. Um, there is nothing holding the bipod together. And this is a good example to uh, look at what you're looking at. There's no ball gimbal in here. Uh, it's uh, not even a half bowl. Uh, it's kind of like what you see on video tripods where you have a threaded rod that goes down through a bowl type setup. Uh, and that is supposed to be what gives you all your adjustment. But you see that the uh, threads are back and forth. The bolt moves back and forth to the side. Uh, there's no front and back. So that's all you get is you get your uh, movement side to side. I'm having trouble getting it back together now. And there's a spring and a seat in there. And then, of course, you can just take it and screw the whole thing back together. And it goes back together pretty easily. That's assuming that you don't lose the seat and the spring and all the other stuff. Uh, so you can see it really doesn't work like an Atlas bipod. Uh, so why would you buy one of these thinking that you're going to get to see how an Atlas bipod works? Uh, you're kind of fooling yourself. Uh, really what I've come down to and what I've determined it is the only reason why someone would knowingly buy one of these counterfeits 
is because they want to look like they spent a lot of money on an atlas. Um, there's no functional reason to buy one of these. Uh, you'd be much better off going and buying a Harris, or if you can't even afford a Harris, then go buy a Caldwell bipod, uh, and you will get a whole lot different set of features that will work well for anything from a 22 uh, up to a 338 Lapua Magnum, and you're not spending the money uh, that you would have to to get an Atlas. But if you want the functionality of an Atlas, buy an Atlas. Uh, if you like the look of the Atlas, buy the Atlas. Because when you buy a counterfeit, you're just hurting everyone. Uh, you're hurting your fellow shooters because that means those companies stay in business and they continue to import these and try to sell them like real Atlases. And don't fool yourself, a lot of these get sold at gun shows and on eBay to unsuspecting buyers. Um, we'll post a letter uh, that we got from Casey Betts from or from B and T, uh, and Casey, uh, he has a big problem with these counterfeits because not only does it damage his business, but they get a lot of shooters out there that have these bipods that think that these are real Atlas bipods, uh, and you'll run into occasional threads online where somebody is bad mouthing their Atlas bipod for breaking not even realizing they don't have a real Atlas bipod. They have a counterfeit that has fallen apart on them. And had they had a real Atlas bipod, and if they managed to break it, which I haven't managed to break one of these yet, uh, you send it back to B&T Industries and they will make it right. So supporting these guys, buying these things, uh, is just hurting everybody. It's hurting B&T Industries because they're not able to recover their investment on manufacturing an absolutely amazing piece of equipment. Um, it's hurting their reputation because when these break, somebody doesn't say my POS counterfeit that I bought off of Amazon broke, they say my Atlas bipod broke, which is not the truth. Um, so overall, I can't recommend anyone buy one of these for anything. Uh, if you want an Atlas, buy an Atlas. If you want a quality bipod that doesn't cost what an Atlas costs, there are other options out there. Uh, not everybody needs what an Atlas bipod provides them. Uh, but recently, when I set up a rifle for my father, uh, we were talking bipods, and uh, he came across the same thing. And he thought about buying a counterfeit, and I explained to him my views on the counterfeit bipods. And he ended up, because he liked the function of the Atlas, he purchased an Atlas. Um, very easily, he could have purchased a Harris bipod uh, to do the exact same thing and spent less money uh, than he spent on the Atlas. Um, it's just a matter of if you want the quality or you want to look like you buy quality gear. Um, that's about it on the Atlas counterfeit bipods. Uh, we'll have a write-up on our website, and I will put that link down below, along with Casey Belt's uh, email to me, uh, basically on the bipods. There is rumor out there that they're officially licensed uh, version 8 bipods. That is not the case, and we've got a statement from Casey on that. Um, so there are no officially licensed Atlas bipods in the wild. Uh, there was a deal that was in effect trying to get officially licensed version 7 bipods that use the pull adjust legs. Um, that deal never actually came to fruition and so none of the bipods out there right now are officially licensed. It's either a legitimate Atlas bipod or it's a counterfeit uh, that is not licensed. Uh, so make sure you go on our website and check out that full statement from Casey there. Next thing we got to talk about real quick, we just got a really cool product in from SLR Rifle Works, and this is their Glock Magwell, and this one happens to be for the Gen 4 G17. They also make them for the Gen 3, and also for the Gen 4 and Gen 3 uh, Glock 19. And this is a really cool magwell. Previously, I had a Dawson Ice magwell on this pistol, and it was really a uh, pretty large magazine well. Great for pure competition, 
uh, but definitely not something you want to carry. It kind of gets in the way. Uh, it also causes issues with uh, magazines that did not have a base pad. Uh, when you go to drive the magazine in, uh, the magazine sat just below flush on the magwell, and that's really not a good thing. With the SLR Rifle Works magazine well, uh, you get a pretty decent addition to your mag opening there, and you only add a little bit extra length to the overall grip. Uh, when you go to insert a magazine without a base pad, uh, you still get the magazine protruding beyond the bottom of the mag well, so you can really slap that magazine in well. Uh, if you need to tug the magazine and you don't have a base pad on it, you can still hook your finger in the front here uh, and get some effort on it to extract the magazine. But I would recommend if you are going to run uh, something like the Magpul GL9s in here, uh, that you go ahead and put their L plates on the bottom just to give you a little bit of extra extension and a little bit of extra traction for removing. Uh, but as far as reloads, um, it's really, really nice and smooth. Uh, the lip on the front of the magazine well, uh, when I get my grip, my uh, bottom of my pinky is pushing against that and really locking the gun into my hand. Uh, we haven't actually got out to the range and shot with it yet. I just got this on last night, but I wanted to give you guys a preview to it. And we'll come back with a full review once we've actually uh, done a little bit of shooting with it. But a really nice product from SLR Rifle Works, and I'm looking forward to working with it quite a bit. Uh, it's really quick installation. If you have a slug plug or anything in the uh, grip of your Glock, you want to pop that out. Uh, the magwell slides right in there, and it's retained by one screw. Uh, through the lanyard hole in the back of the Glock. It gets on there. It's really tight. It fits great. Um, so again, great piece of machine work from SLR Rifle Works. They really put out some quality products. So uh, stay tuned for more info on that. Uh, we're also working on wrapping up our AR, AR pistol build. Uh, we've got some video shot on that. I just need to get it all put together. And uh, also uh, working on the RSS Defense RDMR7 uh, review. Uh, it's a really cool carbine from RSS Defense. Uh, we burned it down, put uh, about 700 rounds through it. Uh, more than 500 of that was in one range session. And the thing just worked flawlessly. We had no problems with it at all. So we're looking forward to getting the full review of that out for you. Uh, next weekend, I am heading off. Actually, I'll leave Friday morning to head up to Lake City, Michigan. Uh, for the Guardian Long Range match up there. So any of you guys that are around the Lake City area, uh, looking forward to uh, catching up with you, seeing you, maybe meeting up uh, somewhere up there. If you're going to the Guardian Long Range match, uh, looking forward to seeing you there. If you guys have liked this video, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section down below or send them to us on Facebook or Twitter. If you got questions for the next Mail Call Mondays, please make sure you leave them down in the comments section below. Uh, we will read your questions for possibly including them in the next Mail Call Mondays. And that's it for this Monday. Until next time, get out and shoot.